Today is a very special day at the Chichester Festival Theatre. It's the grand gala opening of a brand new production based on Anthony Trollope's Barchester Chronicles. It's a story of Victorian England, a tale of a cathedral city not unlike Chichester itself. Later on tonight, this stage will be filled with over 250 actors. But this is a production with a difference, because all of the cast, including myself, are just amateurs. And what's more, not one of us has ever done anything quite like this before. I get sleep sometimes just thinking about the character, but... I normally get nervous about 30 seconds before I go on. If I sort of have a few deep breaths, a good warm-up, I should be OK. Every single person in this theatre will have nerves, and if they don't have nerves, it won't go well. With support from the technical team at the theatre, the mammoth task of whipping us all into shape was given to top theatre director Roger Redfarn. Go. The first people off must move. The idea is for people who are interested in the art and craft and skill of the theatre, whether it's acting, wardrobe, props, design, lighting, sound, to have the opportunity to work with seasoned professionals and discover more about those skills. so good. But now let's go back to the start of our story, way back in December, at the end of the last century. The very first meeting about the production attracted more than 700 people from the community, all keen to take part. The next step was the auditions. I wanted to do it because I was hoping for a good part and the fact that it was on, you know, the Chichester Festival Theatre. Because it's a big big well-known theatre. I've mean, seen loads of plays in the year then. I thought, wow, one day maybe I could be on that stage. I haven't tried it. I do. This is Kevin Fraser. He's travelled all the way from Kent to audition. He's hoping desperately to get one of the lead roles. <laughs> I've been involved in amateur dramatics from a very early age, from primary school in nativity plays and all the way through School. Oh, Father, what is it? It, it seems slow to turn the whole And this the is Holly Smith. She's 18 years old and studying performing arts at Chichester College. For her, getting a good part would be a dream come true. In such warm terms of setting up a school, and I said I would be most happy to take a class. Ever since I was little, I just love having an audience. You know, it's just a big thing. Always dressed up and performed in front of my parents and at Christmas, always, you know. For example, when I did my nativity play at school when I was four, I pushed all the angels to the side, you know, moved them out of the way to get to the front. Right, now reverse them. Read the other ones. And Stephen, you want a lot of vo more vocal energy. We're looking for them to be, obviously, the things you would look at at with any actor, the right age, the right style, the right type. What is very difficult for a lot of the actors in this production is that anyone who knows the stage in the festival theatre will know it's a very big stage and a huge auditorium and it needs great vocal energy. I told you I loved you and now you mock me. All right, thanks. I would take your coat off and your scarf the auditions went on for days and days until everybody who wanted a part had been seen. Uh, no, right at the back. You've got to project, I'm afraid. At the end of it all, Roger was a touch tired, but had he found his cast? I don't know. I've got to go right through it and give it a lot of thought. Seriously, I can't say. You know, I mean, there's a lot of very good people, but I now got to give it some thought. I hate waiting after auditions. It's the same with drama schools. You know, you normally have to wait about two weeks, and it was just horrible thinking, am I going to get her or am I not? And if I don't, what am I going to do? It was a good Christmas for Holly and Kevin. Both of them got just the parts they wanted. 
Kevin's going to be Obadiah Slope, the Bishop of Barchester's chaplain, and a right nasty piece of work. That I expect to be the new dean of Barchester. Well, Slope is the, um, is the villain of the piece, really. Out and out. He slimes, he sleazes, he manipulates, uh, he even chases the women, which is unusual for a vicar, I suppose. Would you really Holly's got the part of Madeleine Neroni, the play's femme fatale. Injured in an accident, she never walks, but weaves a web of intrigue from her sofa. Signora Madeleine Neroni um, is a very exotic character. She's a sort of, I'd say, the sort of evil character in the play. Well, not evil, she's just very manipulative and quite exotic, and she has sort of men falling at her feet, but then she sort of says, go away, you know. Well, Slope is absolutely enamoured by, by Madeleine, uh, just totally and, and I think just completely sexually attracted to her, nothing else. Can you all look this way? Okay. It's the morning of the first rehearsal. Time for a team photo as finally we all get to meet each other. Thank you all very much, lovely. Okay, fine. Half past nine, Sunday morning. Time not really that I'm uh, used to. Lots of people here, uh, far more than I expected. I haven't got a clue who anyone is. We have to check them in for rehearsals. We have to check that they're here. Yes, I, I could yes, only I tell you who isn't here by doing a roll call. I know, that's what I'm saying. We should do the roll call as they come in, normally. That's the way to do it, yeah. We need to talk all this through, but anyway. It's a pretty chaotic start to the day, but soon everything's sorted. And welcome to this uh, momentous occasion. We've got this far. We, look, I want you to note, we're starting rehearsals about five minutes early. <laughs> I like it like that. <laughs> let, let, let me in introduce you. This is Mr. Obadiah Slope, my... Uh... Chaplain. Now, I also understand there's a great deal of Sabbath day travelling here. On looking in Bradshaw, I see that there are three trains in and three out of Barchester every Sabbath. I wasn't too sure of my character until I actually got here today. I wasn't sure how to do the voice or how to sort of project it, but I've read through the character over and over again, trying to sort of make a picture on my mind what I want her to be like. Um, no, it's quite exciting though, very exciting. I fell while ascending a ruin and injured the sinews of my knee, so fatally that when I walk I can only drag myself along with a painful and ugly limp. So I determined never to walk or stand again. Today's uh, very important from everybody's point of view because it's the first time we've ever had the cast together to read the play so we hear them all as the characters and hear the play itself as a piece of writing and also to start to see them play together and act together. We then get the thunder and lightning and everybody starts to move and as they move the revolve starts narrator number two. As you can see, Roger has a grand vision for this production. Not only is there a huge cast, but he wants literally hundreds of period costumes and props. All right, with a tea tray, which has on it a coffee, a, a teapot, a milk jug, a sugar bowl, and that's all. And the person responsible for making sure that all the actors and all the props are in the right place at the right time is also an amateur local parish councillor and grandmother, Jan Bryan. What I love are the logistics of the theatre. I love working out how you get things on, how they work, uh, the excitement of backstage, knowing that if we haven't got the right thing there for the, for the cast or the actors, they are stuck. So we have a tremendous amount of responsibility, which I don't always think the audience realises. With the cello and with the bow, it's very low key here. It's you know, the first day of the first rehearsal, I'm not sure if any of us knew what we were doing exactly. What he's about. No, he or she'll know what he's about. You know, what I'm giving you is a very rough technical shape. The play has to be blocked as to where people stand, where they come in, where they exit. And everybody, all the stage managers, sat and took notes of where everything was happening. Take the hand, kiss it. Now, as, there's, as you do the kiss, there's a little music. Starts. There's a music cue under that. Oh, there's a lot to do, <laughs> a lot to do. But no, I mean, it was the sort of day I expect. I mean, it's in, at the moment, the whole show and the idea of the show is all in my head. 
and I can only share so much and it comes but now after today you know people like Joe the stage manager the assistant directors and that have got some idea of what I'm about and where I'm going so then I can share it and share the problems with them The principal characters have to attend rehearsals several evenings a week, as well as every Sunday. It's hard work when you've also got a full-time job. Gentlemen, don't put your hands... I own my own company, which produces uh, chemical cleaning products, which I market and sell, bulk of which goes into the DIY industry, although I do, do deal with some uh, grocery companies. And it's going extremely well. This is a full pallet this morning. Well. The sales are absolutely fantastic. I've got about three other shows I'm doing at college. Come in, come in! Don't give me when I was nine years old. My mother ran off with a butcher, and I've been looking for love ever since. Fabby waspish. Best beware my sting. My remedy, then, is to pluck it out. Lie if the fool could find it where it lies. So I'm going to try and land all of them at the same time. My brain's just... <laughs> I haven't seen my home now <laughs> for the last week. My whole life seems to have revolved around my car at the minute. Confirm the rate of sale that we're getting. As the weeks go by, rehearsals get tougher, and it's time to put the script down. The entire cast now need to know their lines off by heart. I am preaching today as the mouthpiece of that illustrious divine, the Archbishop, the Bishop of Barchester. <laughs> Mr. Quiverful, uh, sorry. Let me tell you plainly, uh, my understand, uh, there's obviously a time when you have to, to get rid of the book and, you know, all the security of, of having the book goes. It's like a baby on a bottle and, and as soon as the bottle comes out away, you think, oh, you know, what's happening? Perhaps nerves takes over a little bit. I had a really bad day that, that day. My mind just wasn't fully on it and, uh, and it obviously showed. The production moves on at a pace. A host of volunteers work on the scenery and costumes and Jan is scouring the south of England for genuine Victorian props and furniture. Today she's come to HMS Warrior at the historic dockyard in Portsmouth. Oh, there we are. We've got oh, one for you. Jan. Got Jan. Got there already. Those are going to be for the picnic scene. The production is just prop, 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 prop. We've, I no, don't think there's ever been a production with so many props as there are in this one because we've got casts of hundreds and everybody is going to have a prop, everybody is doing something. And um, Warrior, where we are today, has been absolutely wonderful, finding us really genuine Victorian um, buckets and tin plates and Gladstone bags to use. There's an awful lot of luggage in this play. But the hunt for these things is part of the exciting thing that backstage people do. It's an achievement, it really is. Um, it's been a very long and exciting quest, but I think we're there now. OK, we're lacking Kevin. Yeah, Joe's going to give him a bell. Which is a bit worrying. Yeah. He normally sails close to the wind. Right, but... yeah. Joe, could you ring Kevin on his mobile, please? Not his we're, numbers in we're my lacking file. Slow, on the spy. Oh, At the end of a hard-working day, to come in and concentrate very hard for three hours is, is quite demanding. And fish and chips and vinegar, vinegar. We do the warm-up every night before and try and jolly them along and get their bodies and minds working in, in a different way to the way they've been working all day. It's, you know, it's a different environment. Luckily, the warm-up gives Kevin a chance to slope in just in time. I take my text from the letter of St. Paul to Timothy, study to show thyself approved by God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We've been at it non-stop, and I, I suppose as a professional actor, you, you, get, you get used to that, and it just seems to be constant now, and I could really do with, uh, 
the day off, really. But Roger's getting even more Have demanding. We got the dolly. Just go, just give it a bit more edge and jag. Jan, this inkwell has to be set open with the pen. He's in the middle of writing a letter. He had again to open it, and the pen was set the wrong way round. He's, it's like this. I don't know, I don't care, but let's solve it. I keep asking and asking and asking. It doesn't happen. Do the revolve cue. Every night we have to check every single thing that we put out for everybody. And it has to be there for them because they need the confidence of knowing it's there. Never mix love and business, Mr. Sloot. Either stick to your treasure or follow your love like a true man. Which is it to be with you? Roger gets very excited about uh, the whole concept of Barchester. He does get very extremely set in what he wants, uh, which is fine, but uh, there's got to be a two-way interplay between the director and the actor. You can't just sit there like a dummy all the time and just be pushed around. He's um, a very, very a real perfectionist, I think is the best way to describe him. Um, so professional, he wants everything, you know, done exactly to the point where it's perfect. Because I had a problem a bit with my projection at times. You know, I was really trying to build it out, thinking, you know, is this good enough? Because you can tell a lot by his face, he just smiles and sort of give you this kind of look if it's not right. Yeah, I don't ever think of them as amateurs. I mean, now and again, if I get, you know, a bit tough with them, I, ha I do have to have think, oh, hang on, four lads have been at work all day. and they, But I try not to do that. It's up to me to push them as far as I think they can be pushed. and maybe a little bit further. Ladies and gentlemen, listen. Right. From now on, we're in performance mode, which means no noise backstage. You have to imagine the audience in. The noise over the last few days has been terrific. Well, it's the first dress rehearsal, full costume, and even more to think about. Virtually every character in the play has at least one change, if not several. And of course, in Victorian times, there was no Velcro. I have to change very quickly after each scene. So it's been a bit of a problem getting in and out, especially just now, because I had about four minutes to get in and out of it and then get on stage. It's quite tricky. Get that slime on. We love this slime. My costume is um, tight to say the least. But that's what I wanted, so it looks very spidery and long. It seems to work quite well. Certainly everyone avoids me when I walk along the corridor, like the plague. Oh, Madeline. So our characters look the part, but are they up to it? What does Roger think of their performances? I see. Polly is very beautiful. She plays it beautifully. What I think she needs to do is to work, for example, on her voice. And this auditorium has helped her tremendously. Because if you can play in this auditorium, you can play anywhere. How can you be so cruel when you know that my heart's entirely yours? Madeline, I love only you. He's a, a wonderful slope. I mean, even his hair goes into slope hair. He knew exactly from the word go, I think, where he wanted to go with it. And it's been very interesting watch him get the physical aspect and the... Um, the, the, the mental attitude towards other characters. Oh. Madeline! Don't be angry, because I speak some home truth. Tell me, am I forgiven? Well, that's the first dress rehearsal over, but Roger's not happy. You two go up that aisle. No, well, go and get out of my way. Go and look, all the principals, I've asked to sit down over there, boys. We've got to lose time, and I'm afraid at the moment it's the weakest scene we've got. I want to cut the fancy dress. You know, you're just not in it. Sorry, I'm going to cut it. All right. OK, I just want the principles. Everyone else go very quickly. Oh, he has pushed them, and he will push them more in the next two days until we get a superb performance on Saturday. We're aiming to do this all round, not just with the cast and the actors, with my backstage team. We know we have got to be as good as the professional techies. And if we aren't, we are going to feel very humiliated, I think, because we have said we can do it. Well, it's the Grand Gala opening. And everyone who's anyone in Chichester is here. And so, too, are Holly and Kevin's mums. She feels 
at, totally at home with herself when on, on a stage with lights. And, and that sort of came through quite early on. But as a parent, one is very uh, reluctant to encourage something that could be a very difficult career. This is a, a bit of a stretch for him. If Kevin does anything, he does it to the best of his ability. Yes, yeah, he's very dedicated as regards acting. Also looking forward to the show is Jan's long-suffering husband, Peter. I've been told all the things I've got to look for, from lots of lit lanterns to a boat to a coffin and a lot of other things, which obviously she's had a lot of fun trying to get in the right place at the right time. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the one-minute call. I take my text from the letter of St. Paul to Timothy. And I fell while ascending a ruin and injured the sinews of my knee so fatally that when I walk I can only drag myself along with a painful and ugly limb. Am I forgiven? Are we not still to be friends? Do you care nothing for me then? Oh, Madeline. <laughs> Finally, it's the end of the play, and Mr. Slope gets his comeuppance. He's dismissed from Barchester in disgrace for his improper behaviour with the ladies. Which he replied, May God forgive all of you for the way you treated me! <laughs> It's a really good audience. Yeah. Mayor stood up at the end and clapped. I feel like I could do it forever now, you know, forget drama school. I want to keep doing this forever. I'd love to do this every week. Oh, Did you Charlie, enjoy it? That was one. Oh, absolutely. It was such an exciting night tonight. Wonderful, wonderful audience. Everybody really felt good. And no, it was just a very special evening and something very special that I've done. I've really enjoyed it. It was excellent. <laughs> I thought the timing was wonderful, the organisation was wonderful. The whole thing was, was amazing. It was lovely. To get this quality is just amazing. It's worked so far brilliantly for Chichester. I mean, it's, it's achieved all we hoped it would. According to the Chichester Observer, Barchester Chronicles was a triumph, and it's been a sellout for the whole run. I think we did pretty well for amateurs, but sadly for most of us, it's back to the day job.